What do you do when God is silent? When you pray and you feel like you haven't heard anything from God, there may be reasons behind it. God will speak when He needs to, and oftentimes we look for a sign instead of Him. His silence does not mean that He does not care. There is always a reason behind it. While it may take time to find out what that reason is, there are things we can do in the meantime. Hi, I'm Ash from Lightwalker Ministries, and in this video, I am going to give you four things you can do when God is silent. Number one, try to get God's perspective. Imagine if you were God and you had someone continuously praying to you. Imagine if you knew that person's future, the things that are threatening them, as well as understand their strengths and weaknesses. By loving them, you'd want the best for them, right? This means that you would stay silent if you knew that if you said something, that person would misinterpret it and get hurt or delay their destiny. Sometimes God acts that way with us. He knows how stupid we can be, so he is silent so that we don't misinterpret it and end up making a wrong decision. This does not mean that he will never speak, but rather he will speak when the time is right for you to move. In Isaiah 60 verse 22, it states, The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. So let's try and see things from God's perspective. It will put us at ease knowing He cares for us so much. Trust Him that He knows what He is doing. Number two, develop yourself and your skills. The time spent waiting for God to tell you to move can feel like it may never happen. But let us not forget 2 Peter 3 verses 8 to 9. It states, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This does not mean that we should be sitting idle. With the time we have, we should develop our skills and most importantly, our spiritual and prayer life. The breakthrough that you are praying for God to bring may end up making you so busy that you won't be able to handle it. Maybe that is a reason why God is still remaining silent. You are not yet ready. Take the time to develop yourself and your spiritual life. No matter our age, we are always growing and there is always room for improvement. Nobody can ever say that they have arrived, because sanctification is a lifelong process. We shouldn't just be living from one breakthrough to another, but rather we should learn to enjoy the journey and the growth that the Holy Spirit takes us on. Read your Bible. Take time to remember God's promises for your life. That is how we encourage ourselves in the Lord, ensuring that this time that we have presently is not wasted. Number 3. Prayer and Fasting In 1 Thessalonians 5, it states, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And in Matthew 6, verses 16-18, to 18, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your Father, who is unseen, and your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Fasting and praying has often been done to try and force an answer out of God. We must remember that we can never force God to do anything. God will do as He pleases. Prayer and fasting instead changes us and helps us to get our priorities straight. When we fast and pray, we place God first, seeking counsel and direction from Him, but most importantly, seeking God Himself. Embark on a time of prayer and fasting just to draw closer to God. He may use that opportunity to speak to you without any distractions. That way, you will know that you have heard clearly from the Lord as to what to do next. Number 4. Don't move until God tells you to. This, I feel, is the most important point. Don't do anything unless God tells you to move. 
We can see the example of Moses. When he was still in Egypt, he tried to liberate the Israelites at the wrong time. As a result, he was exiled and he had to spend 40 years in the desert. He essentially delayed his destiny by 40 years. Can you afford 40 years of delay because you tried to get ahead of God's timing? Timing is everything and God may be keeping silence simply because it is not yet the right time. This is why you should live by a rule that if God does not tell you to move, don't. It will save you time, energy, and resources. You may have experienced a time in your own life where you did something that God did not tell you to do, and it ended up failing or you ended up worse off because of it. Be it a relationship, a career, or an opportunity, we should always be mindful to get God's confirmation before we proceed. After all, Jesus said, it is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We should not be living off what people say or what prophets say or anything like that. We should be living off every word that comes from God, and He has given us His word through the Bible. So when God is silent, don't think that He's never going to talk, don't think that you're never going to get any direction. It might simply be that it's not the right time. Don't try to rush God's timing, but instead yield to him and trust him that he knows what he is doing. At the right time, he will speak and he will tell you what to do next. Let us continue to walk in the light as he is in the light.